Hi everybody, this is Corey from Aquarium Co-op, and today I've got Lamont with me. Hello. And this is episode number two of Real Fish Talk. Alright. So today we're going to answer the question that we get a lot, how many fish will fit in my aquarium? What do you think, Lamont? Well, I guess it depends on the size of the tank and the uh, type of fish. Alright, let's go with... Uh, Let's pick your tank. Let's go a 55 gallon aquarium. Uh, where would you start from there? Well, I guess I would start by asking, you know, is this a planted tank? Is this something that you're going to be uh, doing community fish in? Or are you going to be doing something else like semi-aggressive? Or... Let's say uh, you, the viewer, wants to do a planted community tank and you want low light and something easy. So, uh, we're thinking tetras, stuff like that. How many fish do I think I'm gonna put in this aquarium by the time I'm done with it? Well, I would say, uh, depending on the amount of plants, and the amount of filtration, um, and I was also imagine the type of tetra that you're gonna put in there, but- Good know, point, yep. Um, so say if you're doing tetras that were two inches long, you could probably get away with anywhere from 25 to 30 in the long term, conservatively. Alrighty, and what kind of uh, filtration would you run on your planted tank if you were setting up this 55? Personally, I would probably just set up sponge filters, but I would, it's all about uh, the aesthetics and whether you're trying to depending on the type of plants and everything like that, whether it's a low flow or high flow type setup. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the important part of how many fish you're gonna fit in this aquarium is, um, you know, do we have live plants? What kind of filtration? How often are we gonna do maintenance? Um, all these, how good are we as a fish keeper? If we're brand new, there's gonna be a lot less leeway than if we're, you know, seasoned and, uh, you know, the type of food we're going to feed. If we feed a very low quality flake food, uh, it's going to dirty the water a lot more than a high quality pellet or a frozen food. Um, also, the plants, when we knew, when our tank is new and we set it up, uh, they're barely growing. There's a lot less biomass there to process waste. And, uh, you know, a tank that's well established typically is more stable. Um, I myself, if I was setting up a 55 gallon, I probably would do sponge filters as well. If it was a display tank in my home though, maybe I would do like an Aquaclear hang on back or something like that. Um, of course I would run uh, it different than most people and that's a whole other episode. Um, but for aesthetics, I do like a hang on back. Um, the other thing I think we should touch on is when we're talking about putting, let's say 20 or 25 fish in there, it might not necessarily be all in the middle row. It could be some top level fish and maybe some bottom level fish. And, uh, you know, you might want to put like Corydoras underneath your Tetras so that when food gets by them, they'll eat that as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, you've got an unusual uh, community tank, or at least I think it's unusual, uh, 72 gallon bow front. Mm -hmm. And it's got, what, your Faka puffer and, uh, well, what else do you have? I don't even know what else what all is in there. I just know that it's an eclectic mix, and uh, you know your load in there is much different than someone else would run. Yeah, it's it's basically a tank set up around the test of just uh, the social interaction of fish that necessarily may not normally go together, and um, everything's essentially based around the Fajaka puffer and what he will and will not coexist with. And of course, I don't recommend that people try this at home because it could end disastrous. Well, uh, sure, yeah, there's <laughs> definitely, that sure. happens. That's when we'll try a lot of stuff to save, you know, our own customers the heartache. But uh, the reason I kind of posed that question was his community tank, while it's a very different community tank, um, you know, it's got a way different how many fish can be in this tank is the aggression not so many uh not so much is it can we keep the fish physically alive but will they kill each other will they run out of territory that type of thing and so there's so many elements that go into this question that 
Um, you know, we can keep bringing up tanks like African cichlids where, you know, it's almost easier the more we put in there uh, because they can't take a territory. Uh, yes, we'll be uh, much more uh, diligent about aquarium maintenance and water changes and things like that because the load will be so high, but we can curb the aggression that way. And, uh, you know, but African cichlids can also be hard on plants as well, so maybe that doesn't fit in. Um, but I know your your Faka puffer tank is planted, mm -hmm. and I've seen you know some nice uh, a lotus picture. He's got a, a lotus that bloomed in there. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, so a community tank can really be any community you end up putting together, even when it's things that don't necessarily have to go together or should go together. Um, and the amount of fish that you're going to keep really depends on what is going in there. And then if it's even compatible, a lot of times you'll run into things like they eat different foods or different temperature or different aggression. Um, you know, I think you found some fish your puffer just won't tolerate at all, right? Yeah, so I would, s what I discovered was that uh, essentially anything that's pink, orange, or red uh, tends to stand out uh, in his eyes or her eyes. As food because you know I also throw a lot of krill in there and things like that and so I found that essentially black brown and gray are the fish that do really well in there. so things that can hide out basically <laughs> right and then also um, you know when I started that started to raise up that fahaka puffer when it was all of about an inch maybe an sure inch and a half, yep I also had you know a, you know two inch platies in there and and uh, I think getting, you know, getting the opportunity to have a small fish and that normally doesn't go well with fish, and trying to introduce fish in an early stage, which I think uh, at a certain point they just learned to deal with other fish in the tank, and then you just kind of build from there. But, yeah. Uh, so on this community tank, we're talking about the 72-gallon bow front here. Uh, what's your maintenance like? Are you having to do it real frequently or are the plants helping out or well, what schedule do you have to keep to keep things in line for that tank in particular at the moment? I would say it's about a every two week get in there, trim back plants, uh, do water change, you know, clean the glass, do all that stuff, pull out any potential algae problems and and uh, yeah I mean it's a, it's a two week and how big is the, the follicle puffer at the moment? Um, I would say right now approximately 8 inches. It's like a little Nerf football, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, All right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got, let's see, I've got an aquarium also that has some turtles in it, which is just a different community. And uh, so they won't tolerate any plants, so I'm at a disadvantage there. They will eat any fish they can catch, which is another disadvantage, but I can keep fast fish with them. I end up having to change water about every week on them because turtles are really messy. And, uh, you know, so even though the question is how many fish can we keep, it's mostly how many fish will the turtles let live with them. And that goes back to that aggression thing. Um, but I've also got tanks at the, at the store that run, you know, maybe a 40 breeder and has three or 400 tetras in it. But we're changing water about 10% every day automatically, and there's lots of live plants. And uh, so really, the skill level that you're at, and whether you're a beginner or you're very seasoned, uh, is going to determine a lot what you're going to be able to pull off. And then two, the types of fish you're trying to pull off. So I could have 300 cardinal tetras and a 40-gallon breeder, and it's working fine. I put one pea puffer in, all of a sudden, you know, it's just going awry. And uh, so, you know, right there, the pea puffer is going to tell me how many are going to live in there. And if I'm unlucky, maybe one pea puffer lives in there. So, you know, realize that anytime you're adding anything to the aquarium, you're going to be taking a risk. Even, you know, we've seen guppies beat up on angelfish and other types of tetras and stuff like that. And that's not a characteristic of a guppy, but we have seen it. So, um, anytime we're adding or taking away from the tank, it's going to change. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll realize that adding a fish will actually make it easier to keep. And that's in the case of African cichlids and things like that. Um, so the, you know, the overall number is 
we would say a conservative amount would be like an inch of fish per gallon of water, um, which is a very loose, loose rule that a lot of stores use. Because the problem is, you know, let's say we have a 72 gallon bow front tank like Lamont's got at home. Um, we can't really, you know, put, we can't put seven 10 inch Oscars in there. Uh, we can, you know, barely keep a, a 10 inch vodka puffer or something like that in there. But we might be able to easily keep, you know, 100 cardinal tetras in there because it's all the same species and there's no fighting going on. Um, you know, but if you're brand new to aquariums, um, the number you might keep in your mind is, you know, a fish um, that's one inch per gallon. And if we've got cardinal tetras at full grown, they're going to be two, two and a half inches, and that might be you know, something to factor in. That's where that 20 to 25 number comes in. And it's way better for a store or a show like us to quote you a conservative number than to tell you, well, we think you should put 500 fish in and then it goes horribly wrong. So uh, the real fish talk answer is that it's gonna take uh, lots of all these factors, put them together, and you'll see what you can keep going. And it's like anything else that's live, whether it's gardening or something like that, you're gonna find something that you work well with that others don't. You could be the person that grows tulips all day long and someone else you know grows orchids and you can't grow orchids to save your life. Um, so yeah, any final thoughts on this, Lamont? Well, I mean, I would say that when you're kind of establishing a community in a tank, whether it's aggressive or or, or community, you kind of have to start um, small and kind of um, build the pieces as, you know, essentially try different things out, but don't go hog wild right off the bat and just kind of slowly fit pieces together, find out what works, what doesn't work and, and go from there. Because, you know, with that tank, there's, I've, introduced a lot of species that normally probably wouldn't go together um, but I think since uh, they're all about at the same aggression level they're all within similar sizes and they all kind of uh, there's a few in there that are more herbivore where some are more carnivore and sure. where you can kind of separate the crab when you're feeding and stuff like that plus having visual barriers and plant growth and having spots in there that are dark for the nocturnal fish that uh, you know that way they're not constantly looking for a place to hide and you get things like pacing and so everyone seems to kind of have their own spot in the tank and there's obviously a tipping point where it's like you've got too much stuff in there and the whole house of cards kind of comes crashing down but i would say it's that's why you'd want to do it in small little integrals and also having an understanding of how fish interact with other fish and kind of how to basically disrupt aggression levels by by adding those uh, like I say the visual barriers and the hiding yeah. spots and dark dark places in the tank. So yeah I think we touched on a lot of things in this episode the main question of how many fish to put in the aquarium but you know, things like visual barriers, what we're feeding, all those types of things are going to be in questions and future episodes are going to come. Uh, so, you know, maybe all that doesn't make sense if you're a new fish keeper right now, but if you keep tuning in uh, or ask us the question, we'll be sure to answer anything you ask us um, when we can. Obviously, if there's 20 questions a day coming in, we'll get to it as we can. We can't shoot that many episodes a day, but please let us know in the comments what you want to see uh, or what you want us to talk about. And if we have any experience with it and what a real answer is and not, you know, the pet store employee telling you to buy it. But, you know, maybe we're going to tell you, you know, you shouldn't own that creature or here's the real way you want to do that. And, uh, yeah, that's what Real Fish Talk is. And this has been episode number two. So go ahead and give us a like, leave a comment if you've got one and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So that way you can uh, check out what, you know, visual barriers are going to do for your cichlid tank or your puffer tank or something like that or whatever other topic we're going to cover next. So we'll see you next week.